So when a capacitor and a pure resistor and a pure inductor is connected in series to a generator, this is how we connect them, resistor, coil, and capacitor. All are connected in series, one after another, and to a generator. We know that it doesn't matter what kind of series connection can be DC or AC. Electric current on these devices are going to be the same. So, in a series circuit, both all R and LC will have the same electric current I. But potential difference across the resistor, coil, and capacitor is different, can be different, depending on their oppositions to the electric current. Opposition of the resistance, resistor or electric current is resistance R. Opposition of a coil to electric current is inductive impedance XL. Opposition of a capacitor to electric current is capacitive impedance XC. So, depending on which one has greater opposition, they will have a potential difference on that. For example, if resistance is greater than XL, VR is greater than yeah. If VR is XL is greater than XC, VR is greater than we see the direct proportion because the same electric current passes through that. And also we know that in true resistor, electric current potential difference are in phase. We draw down two vectors in the same direction. For pure coil, electric current potential difference are out of phase by 90 degree. And because it's self-limit is current, so we have the ion potential difference is leading electric current. But in capacitor, we, again, phase angle difference is pi over 2, but this time electric current is leading the potential difference, the potential difference lags behind. So when we connect this two devices in series, I'm going to define the potential difference with respect to electric current of the circuit, which is the same for all devices. This is R, electric current. And in a resistor, that VR and electric current must be in phase, as you said, draw them in phase. But for VL, potential differences leading the electric current is when you draw VL at an angle of 90 degree. For VC, potential difference on the capacitor, it lags behind the electric current, that's when you draw it in negative pi over 2. So in RLC series circuit, if you want to calculate what is the potential difference, total potential difference, what does it mean? If I connect the voltmeter between these points, how much is the reading of this voltmeter which I will label as total, total potential difference? I have to add VR, VM, and VC, them in vectors. I have to add them in vectors. We have VC, opposite interaction. If two vectors are opposite interaction, we are going to subtract them. So VL and VC, out of phase by 180 degree, that's why we should subtract them. We are minus we see. But the R is in horizontal. Then if I want to calculate total of them, I have to use pi over them. This is what total potential difference is. As you see, one, there is a right angle triangle in here, one perpendicular leg is VR, other perpendicular leg is equal to VL minus we see. So the total is diabetes. How do we calculate diabetes? We total to square is equal to V R squared plus V L minus V C squared. This is the equation for calculating total potential difference. So if they want to know what is the potential, the total potential of this one, but sometimes they can ask different questions like this. For example, what is the potential difference between these two points? What is the reading of this voltmeter? So this voltmeter is connected across what? Resistor end. Coil. So no capacitor. You are going to remove we see in this case. If you connect a couple one meter, nine meter, for example, hit like that. In here no meter. So it means you have potential difference across what? Coil and capacitor. So you are going to remove VR. Yeah. So then you will get result as VR minus we see, which is the opposite direction, that's why you subtract that. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is how we calculate the total potential difference. One of them is this. Second one is 
If you calculate total potential difference, we can calculate total opposition to the electric current. Because resistor has an opposition of a different nature, which is because of the immobile and mobile particles collision. XM is because of the self-induction of the coil, it's also opposition. XC is because of the capacity to decode charge or not, it also opposes the electric current. When all these oppositions are combined in series, we will calculate total opposition, which we named as total impedance. So we can get the equation of total impedance effect by getting the, by using this equation. Because when we divide each potential difference by electric current I, because same electric current exists in all of them. So we total over I, which is the surface electric current. The generator is electric current provided to the surface. We are over I, the same electrical on the resistor. We are over I, the same electrical on the coil. We see over I, the same electrical on the capacitor. When we divide them all, we look at we, over, we are over I, it's TR, which is the resistance. We are over I, according to Ohm's law, it is X there. We see over I, which is X. And what is your total over I? Total opposition. What we named this as total impedance. Yeah, in fact, these equations are. Total uh, potential difference equation and total impedance equations are very similar to each other. Oh, the letters are different. In here we have we total is equal to V R squared plus V L minus V C squared, but in here we have Z R squared plus X L minus X C squared. Again, in depending on the type of the circuit, you can find total opposition for any two devices, for example, if the circuit there is no capacitor, we are going to remove x is zero. If in the circuit there is no coil, we are going to write x L zero. If there is no coil, only R N x C. If only x L and x C, no resistor, you can remove it. Yani, uh, Z same equation we can use for different version of the questions. And one more thing, we have also an angle which tells you that how potential difference is leading or raising the electric current. Angle between the electric current I and total potential difference is total. This angle take that. It's called as phase angle difference. Remember, in resistor they were this angle was zero. For coil it was 90, but for capacity it was negative 5, which you remember. But when we combine these two devices all together, it's different than 0 and 90. Any number between them. So this angle can be calculated by using tangent theta. Right angle triangle. Right angle triangle, tangent theta is opposite perpendicular leg divided by adjacent perpendicular leg. So opposite perpendicular leg, VL minus, we say adjacent one is. We are VL minus VC divided by R tangent theta. Inverse it. Tangent inverse VL minus VC divided by R. Also, I can use the phasor for XL, XC, and R. So, again, same angle theta. So, opposite perpendicular leg is XL minus XC. Adjusted perpendicular leg is R. So, XL minus XC divided by R. Inverse it. And theta can be positive and negative depending on. Which one is greater, VL is greater or VC is greater? If VL is greater than VC, inside the tangent function is positive number, then is positive. If VL is greater than VC, absolute X is greater than XC in series. Because how do we calculate VL? I times XL. How do we calculate VC? I times XC. So I is the same for both. If X is greater than XC, VC, that must be greater than VC. If we have this less than VC, which means XL is also X less than XC, but in this case theta is negative. Theta positive means V total is going to be leading electric current, and theta negative means V total lags behind by negative numbers and negative number. Okay. So this is all about RLC series circuits. No more than the questions we have. These are the questions. Just one problem I'm going to explain on it. All RLC and I will continue next time. A voltage source. Generator. Of incidence value. This generator's output. 
We know that that equation B is equal to BM sine omega t. Yes. All generated equations this way. And from this equation, we can get VM. How much is VM? 20. 20. How much is omega? 100 pi. We can get it. We're losing the equation. It's connected across an LRC series circuit of where R is given. C is given for microfarad. L is given to 2 times 10 for negative 300. Calculate total impedance. Find Z. And also, find the Phase difference in angle between electric current and total potential difference and the data. So if I want to calculate Z, I need to know what is R. Yes, it's Q. X and X must be calculated. We know how to calculate it. So this equation, according to the equations, the M is 20, but omega is 100 pi. 100 pi is what? 100 times 3.14? 314. 100 pi, which is omega. So we need omega. Why? Because X is calculated 1 over omega C. X is calculated by omega. So I got I will insert them. So one over omega C C is micro or farad. Micro farad is converted to farad by ten to power negative three is six. We are going to multiply it. So the result is going to be seven hundred ninety-six ohm. For example, omega L omega is two hundred and fourteen multiplied by what is L given? Two times ten to power negative three multiplied by one point sixty-three. So then to calculate the Z, what should we do? We are going to Use the equation R squared plus XL minus XL XC squared. R is 20, XL XC. You subtract them, then you are going to square it, the result is going to be this number. And what about time, uh, phase angle difference? We can calculate by two ways. One can be depending on what we don't have potential difference. All are oppositions. XL minus XC divided by XL is this number, XC is that number. Divided by 20 is R, the result is negative, as you see negative. So if, as you see, XL is less than XC in this case, phase angle difference is going to be negative and total potential difference. Less behind the electric current. Clear? What else is serious? There are other problems, but the rest of them is not that hard. Uh, only be careful about this. If coil is a, does not exist, XL is zero. Again, if there is no capacitor, XC is zero. If not, sorry, it's zero. And next title is about parallel combination. What if we connect these three devices in parallel? What if we connect this capacitor, coil, and resistor in parallel? In parallel, potential differences are equal. Electric currents would be different, could be different. So then, if it is like this, we are going to define Electric currents which are could be different with respect to electric current, which is the same for all. But in parallel connection, one thing we should know Vc, Vl, Vr, and V of this, the effective value of the generator is the same. They are the same. Ic, Il, and Ir could be different depending on again opposition. Opposition of the capacitor, like Xc, if big, big opposition, small current. Which one has big opposition? It will have small electric current. Yeah, and in turn, in XC is great. It said that XC is greatest, longest, and greatest one. XL is that say that smaller, are the smallest in this room. Currents are going to be opposite. So IC is going to be smallest. Opposite, inverse proportion. Opposition of currents are. IL is going to be, and then largest electric current is going to be on resistor. And what about total electric current? How can we calculate total electric current? Again, we are going to the phase. What is phase? We are going to find these electric currents with respect to potential difference, which is the same. And potential difference on all these three are the same. In resistor, IR and V are in phase, that's why they are in the same direction. In capacitor, electric current is leading, potential difference next behind, which is going to be in positive y direction, angle is 90. In coil, potential difference, electric current next behind the potential difference, potential difference is leading, so it's going to be negative pi over 2. Then IL and IC, what is IC? And this one's right. This is IC and IL, they are going to be out of phase by 100 and 
Okay, the, as I said, the question, this is an initial question. What's the angle between? I see an I am 180. I see an IR. 90. 90. IR and I, I, I L, also 90. 90. Okay. So now we have to take and use web to addition. If you, I want to cut the total flow, I'm going to have to use web to addition. How? Opposite vectors are subtracted. I will subtract I C my L. I C minus I L is going to be some of them. I R is horizontal. Again, we are going to use Pythagorean to find the total electric current, which is going to be I R squared plus I C minus I L squared. In series, we added potential differences. In parallel, we add electric currents. Okay. And we can continue. If I want to know, one find the opposition, total opposition of the circuit. Again, there is XC, there is XL, there is R. If I want to find the total opposition of them, I have to again use an equation. But this equation can be proved from total electric current equation. Electric currents calculated by potential difference divided by opposition. For example, IR, V over R. I see. We over X. I am, we over X. Total current, V over Z. Of course, these Vs are same. Vs, in parallel, same. Then we will get it. 1 over Z is equal to 1 over R squared plus 1 over Z. I see minus X, L or X, L minus X, L. Because it's squared, there's no big difference. So this is how we count the total opposition. The yeah, actual total impedance of the circuit minus the equation. Yeah, it's squared, negative or positive. When it's squared, it's always going to look that same number. And also between total electric current and potential difference, we have an angle theta, this angle theta, this angle difference. We can find it again similarly. We are going to choose tangent theta for it. Tangent theta from this right angle triangle. Opposite perpendicular length, IC minus. Just a perpendicular lap of the right angle triangle, I R. So this is how we calculate. But here you should be careful. Don't write I L minus I C. Because the angle can be negative or positive, depending on that. That's why this is always I L I C minus. I L not I L minus I C. So you can go it. If I L is if I C is less than I L, what can you say? about this angle difference. Right? If IC is less than IL, negative. theta is negative. Mm -hmm. Which means total electric current lags behind Next the electric current. If IC is greater than IL, in this case that is positive, yeah, the total electric current leads to potential difference. Because here we defined Electric current with respect to potential difference. That's why we positive and negative effects total electric current, not potential difference. We define it. And also impedance, we can calculate impedance same way we did proof we can do that because I C is V over X C. I L is V over X C. I L is V over R. All these V's are again similar to again they can simplify. We can also get such an equation, we can continue. And that's in the book, there is no just one problem. Uh, this one, if needed, you can use for any question. So I'm going to leave these three equations. One of them is about calculating total electric current. These two equations are calculating about the phase angle difference between total electric current and potential difference. Okay. Uh, and here I said that IC is equal to IL, theta is negative. I C is greater than I L, theta is positive. What if I C is equal to I L? Zero. Theta is zero. What is this called? Resonance. Resonance. Well, we will come to this title. If I C is equal to I L, this parallel circuit is resonating. What does resonating mean? I will talk about it now. In a resonating circuit, electric current oscillates between coil and capacitor. Once clockwise, then counterclockwise, then clockwise, then counterclockwise, oscillating. But condition is what? 
IL must be equal to IC. In this case, it happens. In a resonating circuit, there's an electric current, an electric current is also like between capacitor and the coil or inductor. Now, step by step, we can get properties of a parallel resonating circuit. First, if IL is equal to IC or IC is equal to IL, in total electric current equation, second term is zero. Then, total electric current is only resistance current. Yani, electric current is provided from this generator to only resistor. Because they don't need it. They continuously gives electric current to each other. Take, give, take, give, take, give. Yeah, they're doing like this. So they, they don't demand an electric current from the, the generators. On the other. One of the is electric current is minimum because second term is minimum, electric current is minimum. Okay, and if I like to continue with the next term, next part, this is the phase angle difference equation. Then we got the previous type of what is theta. And this is the, if this is if they are equal, this is zero. I C is equal to I L means theta is going to be. This is the condition for resonance also. Phase angle difference between total electric and potential difference must be zero. Must be zero. And and third one, if electric current should be minimal, total electric current, V of the circuit is V of the generator, it doesn't change. It depends on the generator effective value. So then if this is minimum, that must be maximum. This is maximum. In parallel resonating circuit, total impedance is maximum. And then go on. If I am equal to IC, we are equal to V over X and equal to XC, then X is equal to XC. In that way, capacity and impedance are not also equal. They're also equal. If they're equal, they're equal. So when I write total impedance equation, second term is zero, then 1 over Z is equal to 1 over R, again Z is equal to? In parallel resonating circuits. If x is equal to xc, continue with this equation. x is equal to omega l, x is equal to 1 over omega c. Cross product, you'll get omega equation. 1 over root of lc. This is how quickly an electric current is oscillating between capacitor and the coil. Talks about that. In fact, omega is angular frequency, but also I can write this equation for frequency, right? Instead of omega 2 by f. 2 pi f is equal to 1 over root of L C. Then f is equal to 1 over 2 pi root of L C. This is the frequency equation. The okay, angle of frequency and frequency are directly proportional, but they're not the same thing. Of course, one of them is F, the other one is omega. Yeah, and quickly, how quickly? Yeah, it's also it's between the capacitor and coil. You know, Teacher, how would it look in a series circuit? I will show you. In series, how it happens. So this is parallel. But as I said, in parallel in series, three titles, four titles are the same. What are they? Theta is zero in series as well. X is X C in series as well. Equation omega is the same in series as well. And Total impedance is uh, equal to R, also the same in series. Okay. Series and parallel, it's like difference one and three. In parallel, total electric current is minimum, but in series it is maximum. Yeah, it's minimum, that is only maximum. If this is opposite, the second, of course, third must be opposite to you. So in here, total impedance is maximum, in parallel, in series must be. Oh, but in series, in series, what kind of things in series happens? In series, we have a resistor, coil, and capacitor. These are connected in series to a generator. We C for capacitor, we L for coil, we R for resistor. Total potential difference this time we are going to like because electric current is the same for all. V total is equal to 
we r squared plus vn minus vc squared squared. Root. In parallel, we write this equation for electric current. In series, we write this equation for potential difference. In parallel, resonance start by what? We say that xc must be equal to, but in three in series, the L must be equal to this. Yani, this this first part is changing, base is changing on different bases they have. In series, we L and VC must be equal to each other. If V L and VC equal to each other, in this case, total potential difference going to be R. In here, total electric is IR, but in series, total potential difference is VR. Sorry? Total potential again, this term is zero. Mm -hmm. So total potential difference VR. Then it changes all the potential difference drops on the resistor, not on VR and VC. Huh. If we go on like this fact, yeah, if VR is equal to VC, again we will get this equation from here because VL is uh, I times XL, VC is I times eyes are same, they will simplify. Did we get x and x again? See? What about total impedance? Total impedance, z, r squared plus x and minus x squared. So we did x and is equal to x c. Second term is zero, so r is equal to z again. But this time, minimum. The second term is zero. That's why it's always going to be minimum when you get that. Total imbalance is minimum in series. But it was maximum in parallel. Now, this table is all about series and parallel resonating circuit. As I said, in resonating circuit, electric current is oscillating between the capacitor and the coil. So I will explain this also. This is what happens. There's a capacitor and there's a coil. When we charge a capacitor by a battery, like that, and then connect this capacitor over a coil, electric current starts from positive to negative, like that. Discharges. It discharges with maximum current at the beginning, when it's full. Then, of course, as, as the capacitor is discharged, electric current will decrease. Final it will be zero. So as electric current on the coil it is decreasing, what does coil do? Self-induction. If electric current on a coil decreases, coil reacts, this decrease, and then induces. As supporting electric current, do you remember it? self yes. yeah, yeah. If the electric current on a coil decreases, it will? support this decrease in electric current by a self-induced electric current. This self-induced electric current doesn't make electric current to be zero. It causes this capacitor to be charged again, but in the opposite polarity, like that. Yeah, initially, left plate was the positive, right was negative, but after discharging because of the self-induced current, Left becomes negative, right becomes positive. Later, it again discharges over the coil. At the beginning, again, maximum electric current access, but it decreases by time. Again, it starts to react again. Once again, it charges again by opposite polarity. So then you are going to observe electric current, which is oscillating between the capacitor and, con capacitor and coil continuously. This is what is going to be this. And frequency of the oscillation is just like previous example table. 1 over 2 by root of L C. Depends on capacitors and coils. Uh, capacitors, capacitors, and coils in that case. But every coil has some resistance, real coil. Because of the resistance of this coil, this energy oscillating between capacitor and then coil will be converted to. If you want this circuit to continue oscillating, you have to give this 
energy which is not converted to heat by using a source. What kind of source we are going to use? An AC source. Why? Because electric current is in here is also negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. We have to use a source before it's electric and positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, which is a generator. But if you want to energy from this generator to this, Oscillating circuit, frequency of generator and the frequency of this oscillating circuit must match. They must have same frequency. But not only the same frequency, but also in phase. Yeah, in phase of phase difference between the or phase of these two uh, electric current on this generator and the circuit must be the same. In this case, we can match from generator to this oscillating circuit, and then you can provide. You can provide continuous vibration of the oscillating circuit. This is how all radios are working. Great television stations, radio stations are varying electromagnetic by an oscillating circuit. They need this. If you don't provide energy, what happens, by the way? So then transmission of electromagnetic waves is going to be zero. And after that, you cannot listen to this one. You should continuously add energy from the generator to the oscillating circuit to produce electromagnetic waves. Now, every radio also has a oscillating circuit. This is a coil, this is a variable capacitor. Your radio also has an antenna which receives electromagnetic waves. If the frequency of your radio, and you have a coil and capacitor, the frequency of your radio, and frequency of any radio station are matching each other, you will start listening. How? How you can change the frequency of your radio which by changing the variable capacitor. And according to this equation, we want to multiply root of LC by changing C, increase or decrease, you can decrease or increase the frequency of the radio. You can match which station you are going to this. And last devices are transformers and energy transfer. In transformers, in fact, it's based on the mutual inductance. Remember, we should come to this at the end of the section two. There were two coils on an iron ring, but they are electrically not connected. The primary coil, the first one, is connected to a source, but this time is AC source, because we need to change electric current on the primary coil if you want to get EMF in the secondary coil. Secondary coil is connected to the device which you are going to use. It can be a phone charger, it can be a computer. Based on, on the principle of what? Which you inductance. Two types of transformers we have. One of them is the step up transformer, which increases the potential difference. Yeah, if we choose it going to be greater than, we want step up transformer. Secondary potential difference is greater than primary potential difference. Second transformer is step down transformer. V2 is less than V1. But how can we make potential difference greater or smaller on the secondary coil? By arranging number of loops. Then which coil will have a greater number of turns? It will have a greater potential difference. If N2 is greater than N1, yes, in here part less, in here it's less, eh? N2 is less than N1. Tell me now, is it step down or step up? And two is less than one, and V2 must be less than, in here V2 is less than, it's a step down transformer, gate transformer in here. Secondary coils connect, it has a smaller number of terms. Transformer equation is, so, Transformer equation. This equation tells you that potential difference on the primary and secondary directly proportional to number of turns. V2 divided by V1 is equal to N2 divided by N1. And the coil with a greater number of turns will have a greater potential difference. And also, N2 over N1, also V2 over V1, is called as. Conversion. Conversion. More real 
Sons of Gomorrah can translate all the power by the primary word and another record. Maybe you remember I said that mutual inductance is one of the energy transfer methods. You can transfer energy from primary coil to secondary coil by this method. As energy is transferred from primary to secondary coil, energy is not 100% transferred. Some of them is lost to heat by two ways. One of them is in this current iron core, as magnetic flux is changing in iron, this iron. Uh, what is the core? There is going to be magnetic flux change, and magnetic flux change induces current in the iron core, and this electric current in the iron core causes core to heat up. What are the reasons? Second one is every coil has some resistance. A resistance, what does resistance do? It causes electric energy to convert it to heat. Yeah, because of these two reasons, no transformer can transfer all the power from the primary to secondary. Input power, output power, output is always less than input. But ideal transformers, in ideal transformers, we are going to consider they are equal. Yeah, input power and output can be equal. How can you calculate power equation in terms of electrical potential difference? Input power V1 times I1, output power V2 times they are equal to each other in an ideal transformer. But one thing you should you should know: transformer can increase potential difference, but it doesn't increase power. Transformers are not cannot increase the power. Power can be maximum same same number. Sometimes you get confused. Step up doesn't mean that step up power. Step up potential difference, not power. Power input and output power can be maximum equal to each other. Ideal. But in real, output is always less than input because of the lost energy. Input potential difference of a transformer, V1 is determined by generator. It's connected to generator. For example, now in your house, what is the input potential difference when you plug a charger? 220 volts effective now. This doesn't change. Yeah, you cannot change the input potential difference. It depends on generate this potential difference, or your house affect the potential difference. But we can change output potential difference, or output current. Input potential difference, input power depends on generator, the output can be changed, VLI. How? According to this equation, because this is unchanged, I2 and I V2 are inversely proportional to each other. Yeah, if you step up potential difference in the transformer, you are going to step down electric current, so multiplication will stay unchanged. If I2 and V2 are inverse proportional, a step up transformer steps up potential difference but steps down electric current, step down transformer, steps down potential difference but steps up electric current. And this is similar. In step up transformer, Number of turns in the secondary is greater than number of turns in the primary. And N and V are directly proportional, V2 is also greater than the current side. Inverse to proportional to electric current, I2 is less than I1. What about conversion ratio? Big number, small number. Big number divided by small number. Big number, small number. Big divided by small, greater than one. For a step up transformer, Conversion ratio is greater than 1. Step down transformer. We choose less than 1. And 2 must be less than n when they are directly proportional. Current side? Opposite. Inverse proportion. I choose the greater than I1. And conversion ratio. This is small number. Small. Big number. Small number. Big number. Small divided by big. Less than 1. In step down transformer, conversion ratio is less than 1. Can we write conversion ratio also in terms of electric current? Yes, we can. V2 over V1, because I and V are inversely proportional, is equal to I1 over I2. I can write in here also I1 over I2. 
conversion ratio B2 over B1 and 2 over I1 and 1 but I1 divided by I2 because electrical and potential difference are inversely 